What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple and our contest winners at the end of this show. Now, we all got a little surprised when the iPad mini with Retina display popped up on Apple's online store a few days ago at 12.01 a.m. on Tuesday, which honestly is way past my bedtime. Now, current wait times are around one to three days for the smaller capacity Wi-Fi models and five to 10 days for the 64 and 128 gig models and also cellular models right now. Now, we've heard all the stories about low production issues and delays due to a possible burn-in issue with Sharp's displays, according to Korean website, ET News, and that's not a website about aliens. Now, a teardown from iFixit reveals the internal upgrades we know about with the A7 processor that appears to match the 1.3 gigahertz processor in the iPhone 5S instead of the 1.4 gigahertz processor that's in the iPad Air. The 2048 by 1536 resolution display used from this initial launch batch are from LG with a significantly larger battery that supports the Retina display and offers the same roughly 10 hour battery life. Also, according to Geekbench 3 benchmarks, the iPad mini Retina brings five times the performance compared to the original mini, which is just a huge jump. So get them while they're hot if it's worth, you know, 399 bucks to you. Also in Apple TV news, according to a report from NPD Display Search, Apple's long rumored TV plans, which are far from being concrete due to hangups with content deals, have been pushed off to the side with the rollout of wearables being a higher priority right now. Now, I've been saying we'd see an iWatch before an Apple TV because of these dynamics. The report also says Apple appears to be lining up resources for a television product introduction in the second half of 2014 with two to three large screen sizes and 4K resolution. But again, the hangup has always been the content. Also, KGI Securities Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, who, you know, always likes to get his name in a story, agrees that due to difficulties in establishing an Apple TV supply chain and locking down content deals with the cable operators, he believes the TV project will be delayed to the end of 2015 or early 2016 at its earliest. And, you know, I'm still waiting to get smell vision by then. All right, in iWatch rumors, the Korea Herald reports that NPD Display Search also believes that Apple's wearable iWatch product will come in a 1.7-inch screen size for men's watches and a smaller 1.3-inch screen size for women. But what about the woman who wants a big watch or the man with skinny wrists that wants a tiny watch? And what's an Apple Byte without an iPhone rumor? According to a Bloomberg report, Apple is developing new iPhone designs, including, get this, bigger screens with curved glass and enhanced sensors that can detect different levels of pressure. Now, their source says screen sizes of 4.7 inches and 5.5 inches are in the works, something we've seen over two years ago. But I still don't get the real need for a curved screen unless you want a bigger bulge in your pants. So uh, when's the pre-order date? All right, let's get to the quick bites. Apple has launched a new page on its iTunes store for American Red Cross donations that will go directly to relief efforts for victims of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. Now, 100% of the donation goes directly to the Red Cross, and you can donate as little as five bucks, so I really encourage you to give anything you can to this tragedy overseas. Now, let's shift gears a little bit, and if I told you two companies are back at it in court, who could they possibly be? Well, if you guessed Apple and Samsung, you win. After a judge in March invalidated almost half of Apple's $1 billion verdict in their patent infringement case, a retrial is taking place now to see how much Samsung actually still owes. Now, they're still on the hook to pay the big A roughly $600 million, but CNET reports Apple told the courts recently it still wants an additional $380 million in damages, just slightly less than the original $410 million. How nice of them. So we'll let you know the final decision whenever this case gets resolved. All right, here's some eye candy for you. Apple has shared some additional renderings of their proposed Apple Campus 2 spaceship that the city of Cupertino gave its final approvals for last month. We've seen a lot of the exterior, but new renderings of what it might be like working inside, especially with this modern cafeteria, or check this out, the lobby of the auditorium building that looks like it could really be the command center when the campus needs to take off. Now, my favorite here is this blurry girl who really gets around the campus like a lot. And who wouldn't want to drive into an underground parking lot that looks like a spaceport? That's awesome. All right, finally, let's get to our winners for the two copies of NBA 2K14. I asked you guys to send in your pictures of you decked out in your best NBA gear, and I got a lot of them. So congrats go out to Silas on Twitter, who this guy is legit. He sleeps with shirts, jerseys, and basketballs 
which isn't weird at all. Honorable mention goes to Derek Rossi, who is rep in my Golden State Warriors, so I'll find something around my office for you. And I didn't really notice that many Laker fans since they aren't good at all this year. Also, congrats go to Jay Ugalde, who even got his mama involved, which I appreciate, even though you're repping the heat. So there you go, guys. We'll be in touch. That's going to do it for this week's show. Send us your emails to theapplebite at cnet.com. I'll get to as many as I can. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time for another Bite of the Apple.